Hi. So today I'm going to go through the windowed mean analysis from the lecture where I talked about for loops, but I didn't think students were quite grasping what I was talking about. So in order to do that, I'm going to show off a uh, piece of code that does this analysis. Let me start off by um, just running it. So since it does have a set.seed, I'm going to make sure I run it along with this R norm. That's going to randomly generate some data uh, using a predictable fashion. So it's pseudo random because it's based on this initial seed. So I'm going to go here, going to run the whole thing. Note I have reorganized my space. The code ran over here. Uh, just did that so that it's a little bit easier to see in the video. And then if I visualize it, oh, I don't know what that was. If I visualize it, I can see the original data, that's the black dots, the means across a sliding window of plus or minus five positions. So it does take one, two, three, four, five positions to start seeing reds because that sixth position and then five down this way were all mean together to create this red dot. So this red dot is actually a combination of one plus the window width through uh, the uh, sorry what uh, the position minus window width so it's the previous four values and the current value plus the next five values um, this blue line represents the actual equation which is 0 0.5 um, times the x position plus 5. So that's just a simple linear uh, relationship with a y-intercept of 5 and a slope of 0 0.5. I've plotted it in a 1 to 1 aspect ratio just so that we can make sure we see that nice 0 0.5 slope. Obviously a 1 slope would be like this and then there's our y-intercept. So this all tracks. Let me break down what's actually happening here. I think the easiest way to do that would just to be to create a table. So let's say the x positions are, uh, let's just make them simple. And then the y positions will be something similar. So times 0 0.5 plus 5. What this function is doing is it's taking uh, the y smooth, it's taking the five positions, so one, two, three, four, five, so this would be i for the very first value, and then it's summing one, two, three, four, five above. So this would be the mean, or average, in uh, Excel's terminology from one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five. And then this is sliding down. Now the thing to note is eventually you run out of points. So that is why, so here we can see this sliding window, see how it slides down. Eventually it reaches the edge, and so I can't smooth across that region. Now I could just ignore the points, which I believe is what Excel will do if I do this right now, but with a programming language, we have a little bit finer control. And so what we're getting is this nice smoothed average. Now here I didn't add any noise, although I can. I could get, let's see, random. Oh, that's right. It's harder to get normal uh, random values in R or in Excel. So I'm just going to skip trying to visualize that right now and jump back over to R. That's why it starts a little bit into the x-axis, though, is that that overhang causes a problem. But be, even though that there was noise, I can see that my red dots, since they each represent the average across multiple, have been more in the middle. Now, a key part of this is that initially the data is sorted. And so that was actually a step that relied upon the fact that I generated the X values in order. But in real data, you would probably need to first reorder everything based on uh, the X position in order to do this analysis properly. So running through, 
um, this first step creates a data frame. If I visualize it, and let me make my plot small so we can visualize what it looks like. Here's my data frame. It's got a single column called X. That's because of this code right here. And then it's got a second column that gets created called Y, which is created right there. Um, if I visualize DF1 though, I can see that assigning values to dollar sign Y, it didn't just assign data to an object, it actually inserted it into the overall structure of DF1. There is a new column now, and that's just a, a feature of R. It's a left-hand assignment, which is a little bit weird, but that is how it works. So we can modify this object by assigning to the dollar sign extraction tool, creating the column Y, and giving it these values. The uh, Y smoothed is then created as a missing value column. So right now there is a position for Y smoothed, but it's all set up to be missing. I then create a parameter called window width, which will then be used here in this next step. The final step before the for loop is to create the vector to loop across, that being the starting positions of the window. So if I, if I go back to this kind of uh, analogous data set, that's me declaring that this position through this position are the right positions to analyze. And if you go look at it, the way that works is just math. That if I take one plus the window width through in row, so the total number of rows minus the window width, that means that as I slide across everything, I never kind of go too far or start too soon before I can actually do the analysis. That's all this is doing. So this creates the object I'm going to loop over, which means the first time this runs, I'm just gonna add a sys.sleep in here so we can watch it work. It's gonna sleep for a half a second and then move on to the next round. Um, yeah. So it's going through, it starts off at position six, and then it's going on to the next position. Um, this is it finding the positions it should extract. This is it extracting those Y positions across that window. This is it then finding the mean across that window of values. And this is finally it inserting the data into the original data frame. It's then printing, which you're seeing it do over here, and then it's sleeping for half a second. If I erase that sys.sleep, it will go much faster. Done. And I can visualize what happened. So right now, when I try to debug this and I run just cur window position, I get what it was at the very end of the loop, and that's because the loop's already run, so i has been changed across all its values. One thing to note is I didn't have a value for i initially. Um, it was only through this function that i got created and then changed each time. The for loop is what controls that. Each round of the loop, it then ran this code, so this was it calculating the window mean. So this is the windows that it's going to analyze, so position 80 through position 90 of our uh, 90 row data frame. Uh, it extracts those values, so there's our random values across that region. It then, an <coughs> it then analyzes the mean, that's just a single value formed from the mean of all of these. And finally, it inserts it into the data frame. Now, I've already run this, so this is actually going to not be missing. But originally, this was missing. But after line 220 has been run, it's actually overwritten that original missing value. If you remember when I printed it off, it was just a column of NAs, but I filled it up. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that this is not at the bottom edge of the data frame. The I is currently only 85. So here, I am modifying the Y smoothed column 
at position i, but that's not the end of it. And so if I look at y smooth, I have those missing values that corresponded to these analogous positions. Finally, it was printing it each time. During the visualization step, I just printed x and y. I used an aspect ratio of one just to help me visualize that uh, 0.5 slope. I then added lines across the smoothed points. So that's this red line. I then added the points in just so we could see where the points start and stop, although I think the smooth line does a pretty decent job. Finally, in blue, I added the actual slope, or sorry, y-intercept and slope line to the plot just to help visualize what it is uh, being generated from. And when I see that, I can see that it looks good, looks correct. And that's the idea. That was the smooth window analysis. Very common tool, very uh, useful um, in day-to-day uh, -day R. I will say that most of the time I will use a function called uh, roll mean from the zoo package to do this. But honestly, it takes a while to um, figure out that package. And, and this, I have very fine control of. I can go in, I can modify it, I can visualize what's happening and I can change it in a, a very powerful way. So like, uh, I can tell you in roll mean, it's kind of hard to figure out how to pass in the na.rm function. Well, I can do that here. Or sorry, argument. I can modify this so that it always goes to the edges and it just, if it's uh, extracting from too far, so let's say instead of all the way from one end to the other, it does do every single value. Well, that means that the first time this loop runs, let me make my code pop up. There we go. The first time this runs, i is going to be one now. So if i is one, and I try to pull out i minus the window width, well, some of these are below the size of the data frame. So what I could do is change this so that it is only positions that are greater than zero and less than or equal to the number of rows in DF1. Now, when it runs this, even though those edges don't quite uh, have enough points, it will still consider them. So I can run this, you'll see that it now printed from position one through position 90. And then when I visualize it, I actually have points that go all the way out to the edges. Although one thing you may note is that this edge really starts to deviate away from the actual relationship. And that's just because there is not as much data to average across. And so we're further from the mean. That's your sample size determines how um, uh, precise you will be across multiple uh, runs of the same sampling. All right, with that, I'm going to end it. Thank you, and hopefully that helped you understand what was going on or gives you some inspiration to try your own for loop. Really powerful tool, uh, really uh, fun to just prototype code and kind of work through things one step at a time. Eventually, you would probably go through and replace all of this with a function that does it more quickly um, uh, without the need for a for loop. But for that, you need to know how to program custom functions, and for that, we will come back soon. Thanks for watching.